from your love. If I climb to the heavens, you are there. If I fly to the sunrise or sail beyond the sea, still I'll find you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we begin a new week, we are invited to hear the voice of God resounding in our own hearts as the voice of wisdom which carries us through life. In the readings today, Jesus admonishes his disciples and asks them to look out for their brothers and sisters, especially when they commit sin, especially when they are on the wrong path. Let us now call to mind our sins and so prepare our hearts for these great mysteries. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of wisdom. Love righteousness, you rulers of the earth. Think of the Lord with uprightness and seek him with sincerity of heart, because he is found by those who do not put him to the test and manifest himself to those who do not distrust him. For perverse thoughts separate people from God, and when his power is tested, it convicts the foolish, because wisdom will not enter a deceitful soul or dwell in a body enslaved to sin. For a holy and disciplined spirit will flee from deceit and will rise and depart from foolish thoughts and will be ashamed at the approach of unrighteousness. For wisdom is a kindly spirit 
and will not free a blasphemer from the guilt of his words because God is witness of his inmost feelings and a true observer of his heart and a hearer of his tongue. Because the Spirit of the Lord has filled the world and that which holds all things together knows what is said. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response is, Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. O Lord, you search me and you know me. You yourself know my resting and my rising. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down. You know all my ways through and through. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. Before ever a word is in my tongue, you know it, O Lord, through and through. Behind and before, you beseech me, your hand ever laid upon me. Too wonderful for me, this knowledge, too high beyond my reach. Oh, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your face? If I climb the heavens, you are there. If I lie in the grave, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn or dwell at the sea's furthest end, even there your hand would lead me, your right hand would hold me fast. You will shine in the world like bright stars because you are offering it the word of life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung round his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, today's first reading, taken from the book of Wisdom, is something of an exhortation. It calls for us to look for righteousness, virtue and wisdom in our lives. And indeed, in these times when we are plagued by 
a lot of misinformation given to us by the media bombarded from all sides because various media platforms various kinds of propaganda are available all around us we are led to believe a lot of things and some of these things lead us to lead lives that become very very used to sinful patterns habits and behaviors and we seem to get used to them we seem to be comfortable with them rather than examine our lives for these difficult habits these sinful habits we choose to say if it is done by others what's the problem there is no real reason to be upset about it but the gospel today asks us to be careful that we do not drive a wedge between ourselves and god because god does not enter a deceitful soul god does not dwell in a body that is enslaved to sin and the subtlety of the issue is this that our sinfulness is somewhat of a blind spot to us we can rarely see it look at it face to face and admit it because we often have a larger than life image of ourselves we can never do wrong we can rarely look at ourselves and be honest and the thing that the bible that the reading of today actually reminds us of is that in order to be someone who chooses to be close to god we need to witness to the truth we need to be witnesses of virtue we need to be witnesses of righteousness we need to seek this and the same is reflected in the gospel where jesus tells his disciples very clearly that there are going to be many occasions when we are going to sin there are going to be many temptations that come but we've got to look out for one another love makes us reach beyond ourselves because we realize that we are not sinners in isolation but we are sinners even as a community we have got to look after our brothers and sisters in love because sinful habits sinful patterns do not only affect single individuals but it affects the whole of society when i think that my sin affects only me my family my world i make a big mistake and jesus points this out and he asks for his disciples to have that much love so as to be able to fraternally correct the brother or the sister in the community who seems to be taking a path that would lead them to sin seems to be taking a path that would take them away from his love and so he says if your brother sins rebuke him and if he repents forgive him and these are the two greatest movements in christian in the christian community one of the brother turning to the brother who is in trouble and pointing out where the problem is and the second movement is of the brother in trouble realizing his sin and enslavement and moving away from it and these two movements both require great love and so jesus gives us this opportunity as a christian community as persons in love with him and in love with our brother to pursue wisdom virtue righteousness and to make this a community affair to make this an affair that affects the lives of those who live around us very often we decide to pursue these virtues for ourselves for our intellectual growth we dream of this idealistic world and we are not ready to dirty our hands to actually fraternally correct our brothers and sisters we are not ready to speak up for justice and this is what jesus calls us to do today let us take this to heart and during this period wherein we will be called to bring ourselves to account as we will celebrate the great feasts slowly first the feast of christ the king and then the long period of advent where we prepare for the second coming of jesus and then finally for the feast of christmas can we approach these feasts with a sense of love for our brethren can we approach these feasts with a sense of being at peace with what god has 
ordained for us to do as brothers and sisters in the Christian community. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart we come to you, Lord our God. We will be acceptable to you. We may often be pleasing in this sight this day, O Lord. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brethren, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer one another a meaningful sign of peace. Peace be with you. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. 
O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses, and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Open my lips.